Welcome back, everybody. Um, we have decided that we're going to ask some of our new contributors who have recently joined the, uh, the pro project to come and jo join us on stage, and uh, we can we can ask them question questions and uh, see how they're doing. Uh, Andreas, if if you join us with with the webcam, what I'll do is I'll I'll uh, drop my webcam in order to make sure that we only have four four pictures. Uh, this is mostly just to make sure that we have high resolution in the recording. Um, but, but let us know either way. If you've got audio as well. I can drop it if you good. want. I'm not important. <laughs> um, excellent. So thank you, René. Uh, welcome, Andreas. So uh, please introduce yourself and tell us um, how, how long you've been uh, involved with In Inkscape. I'm a C++ developer since 12 years, self-educated. Uh, I'm working a bit with Inkscape just for visualization stuff uh, for my work or for my projects, more technically than, than art. Could, could you move slightly closer to your microphone? OK. Uh, is it better now? Yep. Yes. Oh, OK. So, uh, yeah, I worked and, and, and visualized uh, more technically stuff with Inkscape just than art. Uh, and yeah, so I, I, I used it and I used some years that I used it. And uh, so the last two weeks, I tried to, to, to draw a big graph <laughs> with the connector tool. I had, I had some issues with, uh, with my resolution with the 4K monitor and the handles on uh, were yeah. that small. <laughs> and yeah, I just, I just tried uh, to download the source and to find out how can I fix this. So. I, I have to say I'm working on Windows, so I have no uh, um, I don't know about GTK or stuff like that. Yep. Did, <laughs> and, did yeah. you find the the guides help, helpful in getting yourself started? I, yeah, I think yeah. I found the uh, guide on the wiki and tried yep. it. Uh, I, I already had MCS2, so it was uh, not that hard and it worked out of the box so that was the first open source project uh where that happened <laughs> for me excellent so welcome that, so that's the the reason why inkscape is the first open source project uh, yeah ever contributed, so. <laughs> oh that's that's so that's so great so we've we've um brought you into contributing to the to the public domain of code that's that's great um so what what, what have you managed to fix or what have you managed to develop so far so I first tried uh, to to fix this issue with the small handles, and I uh, and I found out that so that was the second part. Uh, it was quite easy to to get in the code, so I was very fast able to find the the the, the code for and the file for connector tool. Yeah, uh, and I saw that the uh, the handles. Uh, I saw that there is a um, a new uh, uh, a system for for handles like this control points and control manager. Yeah. And I thought maybe I should dig in that. And then I saw that connected tool is not using that. It's using the nuts, the SP nuts directly. And yeah. the size is hard coded in that. <laughs> so yes. just, my, <laughs> uh, just my work, I just increased this number, and I was able to draw my graph. <laughs> and the next step was I found the chat. Uh, on this Inkscape page, and I asked there if uh, I should dig into that, and uh, and if control points is the right way. Yeah. Uh, and so, uh, did yeah. did you find that um, interacting on the chat or, or submitting a merge request were these were these uh, easy for you? I, I didn't try that, so it was not my first uh, intention to, to okay. bring it back to the, the community. <laughs> I see. <laughs> um, so, like, as a new person, do you think there's um, ways that we can improve the project to, to help new people come come in? Uh, so, for me, it was quite easy now. So, I, uh, I I saw that there are some some wiki pages uh, a bit old, maybe. So, I, I saw so I I started on 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 Windows to debug. So, I yeah. never. I uh, started GDP out of the con uh, of the console <laughs> Excellent. comment line. So, so I, I'm working with Qt Creator. It's yeah. also 
feedback with GDB. So yeah. Excellent. Uh, is, is, is GDB was uh, able to connect to a running uh, Inkscape instance, but I was yeah. not able to start it. Uh, but yeah, I figured it out, and and I, I saw some issues on the wiki that uh, debugging is not uh, possible and debug build is not possible on on Windows systems. So maybe that this page we can uh, update because it's it's able now. Well, it's possible. Oh. Interesting. So you've managed to actually figure out a pro problem that we currently say is impossible, um, but but you've managed to figure it out. Yeah, that's that's great. So um, do you, do you have access to to the wiki cur currently, or do you do you need access? Uh, no, I didn't try it. So. Never. You haven't tried it. Okay. So if you do, if you do uh, want to add this information, and I think it would be quite valuable for other Windows developers, um, what you need to do is you need to email. I think the developers' ma mailing list. Uh, Marin, you 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 know this uh, area. Who 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 do we ask? Do we just ask me or somebody who's uh, an admin on the wiki? We should ask Marin. <laughs> Yeah, but there has to be a process. You can't just ask a, a person. <laughs> uh, the question is who to ask uh, to have a wiki account. So and anyone who has the wiki bureaucrat permissions on the wiki, Uh, but usually that's Mar Marin. So um, if you want to send a message to Marin asking uh, for a wiki account, I believe that you request that you, you give her the username that you want. Is that, is that right? Um, and she'll be able to set you up with a, with, with a wiki account. Just today there was a chat about that uh, another one I was able to do this on Windows. So I'm not sure if he is already updating the. Yeah, if the information is already there, then obviously. Um, but if it's not there, it's, a it's very valuable to make sure that we record some of the, the techniques that, that we have, because um, information does get lost over, over time. Um, our wiki itself could do with a bit of a clean out. Excellent. So d does anybody else have any quick questions for An Andreas? I don't want to pressure him too, too, too much, as he's, as he's pretty new. Um, so, and Andreas, do you, do you know what you're going to be work, working on next, or if you're ex excited for t to tackle some more some more issues? Uh, yeah, this, the second one was the this uh, dropper thing. So we, I, I, meant, uh, I got this in the chat, so I saw that this, uh, they you are searching for a Windows developer, they can uh, reproduce it. So I tried it, and I finally. Oh, excellent! I found it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So this this was the cursor, the cursor bug, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah that was an excellent fix. I'm, I'm, I'm wondering still why there is that come up in in uh, Linux or why it's just why it was. I mean, uh, it's a weird one. Um, <laughs> I I am interested to see. Like, we do know that there are there are memory leaks because we get reports every now and then of like, oh, I move a bunch of objects around and the memory just spirals out of control. So we we know that these memory leaks exist. Um, what, there is a there is a second bug that you might be able to help me with, which is to do with the holding down the control key and moving ellipses, which apparently also can ca causes crashes. Okay. Uh, I rep <laughs> but but only on win Windows. <laughs> <laughs> okay. uh, yeah, the next one I'm working now is as so, I uh, uh, invested already investigated already some hours is the. There's a connected a second connected tool issue with the uh, arrange nicely. Oh yeah. So, but uh, yeah, so I got the. I think I got the where it happened and why, but I don't yeah. know where how it's coming to the end. So. Oh, awesome! <laughs> so, so my opinion, it could never work. <laughs> right? Yeah, there are there are certain things that you see in the code where. Logically, this could never have fun functioned in the way in, uh, it looks like the developer intended this, but it does not do that. Um, 
So thank you very much for contributing. This this is great. I hope you'll be able to stay with us and fix, especially win Windows issues that crop up, which are quite hard. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm, I'm willing to do more, maybe. Yeah, excellent. I mean, even if it's just like what, like one uh, contrib contribution a year, like the, the, the thing is, is that with an open source project, uh, any small contribution, as, as, long, as soon as it gets into the master branch and it's not like a unmaintainable, um, it, it moves the project forwards just a little, little bit. So like any uh, new contributor, we're very excited to, to welcome new new contributors to the project and, and like help them with mentoring or with like guiding them through compiling or, or, or finding certain bits of code. Um, I'm interested to hear actually from other developers, uh, new and old, about whether they think that the IRC channel or the Rocket Chat, it, which one do you think is actually the thing that uh, most developers are going to use? Because I've noticed that there's a there's definitely a split between uh, the IRC side and the and the uh, Rocket Chat side so far. Um, and maybe it's a distinction without without reason because the the, the we have a a pretty good bridge that, that seems to be operating. Pretty good. Yes, pretty good. <laughs> not not per perfect is is the the British way of saying it. It, it crashes sometimes, but it, it mostly does the job. Um, Okay, so what what you can see uh, from today's activities is that I actually have a third activity. So the first activity, which you can't see, is the help with compiling. Um, this third activity is that I want to see if I can get developers to pin down the things that they want to see for both the bug fix release and the 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 one point one feature release that will will hopefully be able to schedule. Because I think that. If developers can say what they want to see in, in, in the 1.1 release, we'll be able to schedule that release more, more concretely because we'll be able to see what each of the, the, the features or, or code refactorings or whatever it is that a developer says that they, they need to get in for the next release. So if you go to the shared notes, um, you, you should be able to see uh, the, the, the list of items, right? So. The things to do for 1.0.1. .1. I think this is actually very, really simple, which is that we have to make a list of pro problems that have to be fixed. And maybe the, this isn't a list, right? Maybe the, we fixed everything that we think we should fix. Uh, and then we need to, to make a release. So my proposal is that on the next developers meeting that we have, this should be one of the one of the agenda items that that. Uh, deciding whether we make a bug fix release should happen, right? For that day, we should say, and then and then it would happen maybe the the week afterwards to give the vectors team chance to properly see what what's going on. Um, and then for the what the one point one release, this is I think slightly more important. So for instance, for for the Google Summer of Code developers, they already have a, a fixed fe feature that, that they're working on, right? We 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 know that they're going to be working on. Uh, whatever their project is. But if you're not a Google Summer of Code project uh, person, if there is a feature that you're working on for, for 1.1, 1, 1. 1, I'd like to, I'd like it if you can add it to this list, right? So this is a thing that you definitely, you as a developer definitely want to have finished for 1.1. 1, 1. 1. And I think this will give us a guide as to sort of like what the size of 1.1 1. 1 will look like. And uh, hopefully we'll be able to make a call on like how much time we think we might need to, to have all of these features in, in line. Um, my personal priority is I want to get the multi-page support in for 1.1, 1. 1, which is pretty ambitious. But uh, I'm hoping that we'll be able to uh, pull together the designs that we need and also the the code ch changes because I think there's going to be a couple of different merge requests that's going to have to come in. Um, Can I ask a question here? Yes, please. Should we even have must have features? That I mean, to me, that feels like um, if we put the wrong stuff there, it will take ages to get a one point one out. Um, I mean, there are different strategies to to make releases. Um, like one strategy is you set a date, let's say in a year or two, 
and whatever feature is ready by the time goes in. And if it's not ready, it will be in 1.2. Uh, right. It's a different strategy. Absolutely. And, and I think this, this is a strategy we can use. You know, we can say uh, whatever gets in in that time. Um, the problem is, is that that doesn't help us to schedule very much because as a project, we know the kinds of things that we would like. And as developers, um, we are, I think, either going to make a commitment that we are working on this feature. Uh, and so we're, we're targeting 1.1. Uh, or we're working on a feature and we, we're not targeting 1.1. And, and that in and of itself will give us, as a project, I think, a, a clear idea of, of, of the developer's intention, right? So like what uh, changes in the code base we, we can expect to see. And uh, the problem is, is that if you, if you, if you set the bar to, to zero features, then technically you could make a new release every week. Right, so like every time we have a new developers meet meeting, we'll just make 1.1, and then we'll release 1.2, and, and so forth. Because like there's no there's no peg that says you know wait until this thing. Yeah, of course we won't do week. <laughs> we would ideally we would do in the pace that's healthy for the user base. Um, like most people actually don't want to upgrade that often. Um, once a year is plenty for most people. Every two years is fine for most people. Um, so we could actually set such a pace if we want. Um, I'm not yep. saying we have to. I'm just saying there could be different strategies, and we have. Maybe we should just think about. It. We, yeah, absolutely. We Go could on. make bug fix releases more often. I would second that actually. Yes. Like yeah, uh, I, I, even I, every yeah. month for a bug fix release would be, I think, fine for me because people would not have to uh, update it. Just if they have some specific bug and, and they come, we can say, oh, it's fixed since the last month, so you can use that. Or it will be fixed, and then in two months, we, you can update without waiting a year. But for feature release, I think one year is, I think, not bad. Yeah. So what, what we're going to do is we're going to have a poll. Um, like for, the, for, for me, we have like two or three big bugs that are fixed in one zero X, and I think that's in, enough that we could release a one zero one release yeah. like any any time. Especially that, uh, given that uh, we could upgrade the GTK version that's packaged with the ver Windows version, and that also fixes stuff. Yes. Yeah, I agree. Um, and, and maybe this is some, something we want to discuss for the, um, the 1.01 developer meeting. Um, as soon as we hear back from uh, the, the mailing list about what the other developers want to do. Yeah, one issue that I have is that if I send this email, then we should hold a meeting next week, and I'm not very <laughs> available next week. <laughs> well, that's the thing. So you you get to set the the first meet, meeting. Okay, so mo Monday. Monday. So in in two days, and then I will go into vacations. <laughs> this is the tyranny that we have been brought to now. That's that's also fine. Uh, whatever you want to do, I just figured you might want some extra time to hear back from the the, the mailing list. So maybe you have it like two weeks before. Oh yeah, that's fine too. So yeah, after I'm back. Yeah, I want to I want to actually um, thank Marin for keeping the release notes up to date because those those notes do make it a lot easier to make a release. Uh, for the book fix re release. So um, one of the concerns from the UX team about working on uh, things like feature requests and improvements to the, the user interface is that they feel like they can't. it's very difficult for them to recruit developers uh, when they're not developers themselves into working on specific features. Um, what, what do developers feel about how they can interact with non-developers? Non when it comes to things like suggesting, uh, especially when it comes to new features, right? So this is not just the responsibility of fixing issues, but it's uh, more of a case of 
how do you barter or beg or, or you know do do the required handshake in order to commit yourself to working on a feature, um, whether it's for Inkscape proper or whether it's for a specific use use case. Why don't I start by asking Mark? Mark, what do you think uh, you, a feature you will work on for 1.1? I don't know. <laughs> I uh, I don't. Uh, I, I usually work on features on a like uh, very spontaneous way like i decide to do something and i try to do it and usually it breaks things but <laughs> <laughs> but no i i don't work on a lot of features so i don't plan to work on features excellent so but, what, yeah. what i'm hearing is that your uh, plan for 1.1 is to work on meetings <laughs> no one thing i'd like to work on at some point is to work on color management workflow but Oh yeah, the ICC stuff is going to be big, I think. If only to understand what's involved in that. Yeah, I, I fully support you on on that task. To to, to be fair. Um, let's see. So we have we have re rewrite the XAML import export. Uh, Jonathan wants to work work on that. That sounds really good. Is that is that extensions or is that? Uh, uh, yeah, that is, that is that is indeed extension. So it's uh, ex currently done via XSL, uh, so yeah. XML style sheet transformation, which is kind of weird stuff from the uh, last century, but people are still using it. Um, and uh, it has a, a ton of bugs, um, both in uh, GitLab and in the auto tracker. And since I do quite a bit of WPF uh, developing on Windows, I kind of need that. So it's been on my uh, it's been on my list for quite some time, and I've been working on it. On and off, but ten. I definitely want to get to it uh, for for one point one. Excellent. Will that will that involve uh, turning them into Python extensions, or will they continue to be sort of like their own special thing? No, I I, I will try to to do it in XSL because I think that it's it's not bad doing it that way. That kind of makes it relatively clean. Um, but if if the functionality I want to have in um, requires it, then I will have to switch to Python. Right. That makes sense. I remember the first time I saw uh, XSLT transformations for a website where they were translating from XML to HTML, um, and the whole website was written in C. Uh, let's let's be clear; it was a very unmaintainable website. Yes, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> that's also what I feel about this. Uh, it's, I I mean, what would kind of make sense is to have some some kind of uh, object structure that uh, that that is able to. Uh, convert um, uh, SVG objects into uh, XAML and vice versa. Um, so, so this kind of would, would kind of make sense. But uh, uh, in, instead, in the current extension, you have like these uh, 150 kilobytes of XSL code, which are giant, and it's it's really difficult to see through what they are doing. Yeah. But okay. So I will see. Uh, whether, whether to to continue with that route or whether to just rewrite that stuff in in Python. Yeah. Okay. So we have um, getting ready for GTK four verbs, deprecated stuff, etc. Um, can can somebody put their name down for for who who wants to do that? And then the I think the command bar is a, a Google so some of code pro projects. So we all we know who who's doing that. So if you can write your name against that too, that that, that would be good. Can I also write down names from other people? Yeah, yeah. If you know that they're working on it, okay. or if you're hiring them to do it, <laughs> <laughs> Thomas, uh, what are you working on for for one point one? Good question. Um, I already committed a bunch of stuff to the one point one or the master branch, um, like cleanup stuff. Um, which makes sure that a lot of constructors in the GUI are actually called. Um, yeah. 
nothing that the end user sees immediately, but um, basically it works better when having multiple windows open, multiple dialogs open. Um, yep. Some of that might be obsolete with dialog rewrite, even though it probably helped getting that done in the first place. Yeah, so um, nothing in the in the uh, UX list, uh, issues list, like it impassions you to be like, oh, this fe feature looks great, user interface feature or whatever. Um, uh, just want to work on the back end? The CSS style dialog, you know, that's a really challenging one. Yeah, that would be interesting because it, it's it's more like fixing rather than creating, right? Yeah, I think both. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because there's probably some user experience adjustments that need to happen to make sure that the CSS and the what is it the um, the tagging mm -hmm. works. Yeah, we can uh, I'd love to, I'd love to see that. So we have uh, the the new di dialogue management from Vantile. Uh, that's a uh, Google Summer of Code pro pro project. Uh, the style dialogue uh, from Thomas. And uh, Tav wants to work on the GIO actions migration, which is, uh, this is uh, he's a super he he hero for, for working on that stuff. Anybody who, who, who does any of the migration work to get to like new versions of GTK is, uh, is a hit hero in my in my world. Also, I guess some of the like GT, um, the C plus plusification of the code base that that's also hero's work. Yeah. So um, when people are typing into the uh, must fix bugs. What we're going to do is, uh, for the release, like we did la last time, we're going to start creating, as soon as we know that we're, we're ramping up for a release, I think I'm going to work with the testing team to start creating uh, lists of the top 10 bugs that must be fixed so that we can get into a habit of um, fixing those issues that have the greatest priority. And then what we'll do is we'll just uh, we'll keep that ten that list of ten things at ten things so that as things get fixed we'll, they'll drop off the list but new things will will come on and hopefully we'll, they'll have a priority so we'll be able to see the uh, the calculated priority of the whole list right so so if if everything is a is a wish list item on that list then uh, the priority is really pretty low and that we could probably make a release. Uh, but do come to the to the testing hack fest, the team testing hack fest, to talk about those the, the like how we do testing and stuff. Yeah, Phil and Stroke. I, I I wish we had a developer to work on the signal stuff because that because that would be really good. Um, it's 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 that it's another one of those back end things where where uh, it's a lot of research to figure out all of the um, places where signals touch things and cause functionality to happen in, in the right way and changing it could break a lot of things possibly but it definitely needs attention because it's slowing us down um, especially when it comes to uh, oh I, I'm dragging this object around on this canvas and so the GTK widgets have to be updated and uh, I know on Mac that causes slow slowdown <laughs> But maybe that's a fix that just needs to happen in in GTK rather than uh, Inkscape. But still, I think the signals are a bit a bit of a mess. Uh, I w wish Harbeer was uh, was here uh, or could hear me, because then we could we could ask him what his what his plans are for one one point one R. He usually does amazing features, so. I think I'll just ask in the in the chat. You, you should ask in uh, Rocket Chat so that you will have a ping. I uh, I preempted you. I and that's where I that's where I did it.
Maybe we should ask Tav to what he's going to work. Yeah, Tav, Tav wants to talk about the GIO actions, but I think uh, that's probably his pr priority, right? So what exactly can you hear me, first of all? Yeah, well, we can hear you, Tav. Okay, uh, what exactly do you want to know? Um, when, Mark what wants do you... to know what your priority is. Well, I, I still didn't catch that. What do you plan to work on in the medium term? Well, right now I'm working on C++ plusifying uh, Canvas items, which has touching about 80 files. It's a huge mess. <laughs> lots of code that uh, is very ancient, lots of code that is way, way, way too complicated. Uh, which, that, that, which parts? Uh, U, UI code or just the the canvas items? So so things like uh, the nodes on the on drawn on the screen, control line, uh, it, it's very very complicated code, and there are many ways of doing the same thing. <laughs> They also have a weird ownership concept. It is taking a long, long time, a lot longer than I thought it was, especially that knots or uh, draggers or handles. I mean, there are like eight different names in, in the Inkscape code for the same thing. So you can imagine nope. all the people that have worked on different parts, you know, coming up, okay, I'm, I'm going to call it this, you know. I'm going to call it this. One of the things that we have on our to-do list is is at some point to change the hat handles from being XPMs to being SVGs, because we have low resolution XPMs which are both bad for the um, the the way that they look on 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 the high definition, and, and they know, also look awful when you rotate them. I actually know how to fix that, and I'm not. I wouldn't use SVGs. I would use. Uh, uh, I, I would draw it in, in Cairo command. Do you think do you think it would be faster to um, see part part of it is that I want to be able to hand off the design work to to the de designers so that they don't have to be co coders first? Um, is there a way to convert uh, SVGs into the Cairo commands? No, I, I, I think you want to you want to write the uh, code uh, by hand. I already have an idea how to do it because you want you want it to be sharp when like the arrows are vertical or horizontal. But right. then you, you want you want the arrows to be able to rotate. If you rotate the canvas, you want the arrows to rotate with it. Okay. Um, how how do you think you would interact with the with a designer if if a designer came to us and said, "This is how I, you know we should do we should do the design." Just to make sure that because it... it's 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 they're simple arrows, uh, double headed yeah. arrows basically. So I don't think there's a lot of design work. Just okay. make sure that it's modular enough that it doesn't call Cairo directly, and it can be uh, switched to something that will do the same when and call Pathfinder or Canvas or, or um, uh, um, other well, rendering. It's gonna, be, it's gonna be very simple Cairo code. So yeah, but know. still modular enough. Like no Cairo code should be uh, in random places okay Cairo code should only be in let's say like display uh, src display Cairo. <laughs> the, the 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 uh handles or, or, or the controls or whatever you want to call them they all have a render function and it, it's all in that render function so so what, what i would suggest doing if you're going to use a different uh back end is you just create another set of functions to handle that so it's just a matter of adapting the render function for the knot or the render function for the the curved path or for a rectangle into whatever. Yeah. So it, it, it's going to be a lot simpler than what it is right now because right now we have pseudo classes and everybody, it's like a game of telephone. You know, someone copied this, someone copied that. And it, they changed the names of this, they changed the names of that. So all the current code is just a complete. Dog's uh, breakfast. Yeah. So, so that's going to take me another 
week or two probably. And then I'm going to get back to uh, working on GIO actions. I want to get the, the, the merge request that I've got, the working project, I want to get that finished up. Uh, and that's basically going to allow actions to have a uh, shortcut. I mean, the code's already there. It just needs some, a little bit of polishing. Uh, and then once that's done, that's merged in, then it'll be easier to uh, migrate more more verbs into, into actions. And then you gain the ability to use the uh, actions on the command line, for example. And it's going to simplify a lot of a lot of the code. It's going to simplify once I can have an action connected to a button, and then have the action maintain the state. So I don't. I'm not going to need to have a, a lot of code to keep things synchronized. Yes, yeah, so this, this is one of, one of those backend ch changes that really gives us a lot of functionality by using yeah, the way in which GTK that's should that's work. All done. It'll give us a lot of functionality. And also, you know, a lot of code gets removed because we have a lot of code that all it does is, is keep different parts of things synchronized in the in the UI. Yeah. And and the actions do that for you. You have the action keeps the state, and then the button the button automatically, if it's uh, like a toggle button, automatically follows the state. So if you yeah. have if you have this, uh, different in different places buttons or things that, that are connected to the same action, you don't have to have, you don't have to write your own code to keep them synchronized. Yeah. Uh, does this work for, for input bo boxes or is it just for things like buttons and chat, chat boxes? It, for now, it's, it's, it's mostly uh, uh, button stuff. Yeah. But you, can still, you can still apply the same kind of principle of, of using actions for other, other things. Uh, it's just, it's a little, more complicated to interact to hook that up with the GUI. Yeah. Does does this help us with uh with the our Glade integration? So if we create a user oh, interface in Glade. Definitely. Yeah. It'll help help with uh, Glade integration because it was Glade integration. You can you can assign in your Glade file. You can say this button is connected to this action, and you can even give it arguments. And then you nice. can have suppose you have a uh, uh, something that has like three different values. And you want to have uh, three different buttons, and you click one button, and it gives you, you know, turns that on and turns the other two off. You can assign arguments to to those buttons in the Glade file. So well, this, it, this sounds great. So it sounds like we're you're on the right track for being able to clean up a significant piece of Inkscape for the next. Oh release. yeah, yeah, definitely. It's, it's, it's I think a, a quite a bit of work. Nice. I believe this helps with the. Does this help with the um, G, GPU rent, rent, rendering project as well? Uh, not directly, I think. I'm, I'm thinking of the canvas item. No, the canvas cleanup I've already done should should help uh, integrate uh, the, the GPU, GPU stuff. Yeah, I'm, I'm getting confused. Sorry, Tev. It's. Uh, it's more easier to see where that should be inserted. Yeah. OK, so um, we've got a couple more minutes left of this session. Does anybody else, is anybody else uh, up for talk, talking about what they want to do for the next re re release? Um, what have we got? Pathpant says they're going to be working on this, the search bar for settings. I, I believe I've seen the merge request for this. It's looking really nice. He's not here, so I wrote it. Uh, but the merge request looks pretty cool, and I think it's uh, nearly ready, at least from a UI perspective. So I think it could be in. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds good. He was here uh, earlier, I think, yeah. Hi, hi Mark. Uh, Mark T from Sydney. Uh, I presume that's Sydney, Australia. Oh, excellent. So, Mark, are you are you a, a developer? Are you excited to work on Inkscape?
I think it takes a while for the for the message to reach the other side inside of the planet. Yeah, that's no problem. Um, we we do actually have a developer team that you can join on on, on the website. Uh, it's not necessary. I think the uh, the primary uh, location for for sort of membership is is the GitLab project. Um, but do 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 join the developers team as well. Which is the same as the IRC channel if you prefer IRC. Um, I, I guess I could ask Uncle Peter if he's uh, if he's going to be working on any fe features for one one point one. The, the short answer would be I haven't got plans to work on any new features. But I have been thinking about what I would choose to work on if I had a completely free hand. One of those would be, I just wonder whether whether we need more unit tests, because one of the things that has stopped me wanting to make merge suggestions or send patches or pull requests is that I don't like doing that without unit tests. And I just wonder whether someone actually can do that or whether it's a request I would have to make of other people who know the code and just say, can, can you suggest areas which have unit tests and in which I could then work? Sorry. Uh, um, and another one is, I wish I noted this, noticed this morning, is that if you go to Mac ports, they will offer, I think, version 9.2 or point, point 0.92, 0 0.92, but it doesn't install. And so the question would be, would either Mac ports or Inkscape welcome patches to enable the Mac port current version to, to install? I've got two other ones. Is if somebody would suggest to me one fixable bug, I would be prepared to work on it. Okay. And so I, I think you're right about testing. I think it's important. Um, and we've, we're desperately trying to improve our test co coverage to be able to make, uh, allow developers to have more con confidence that the changes that they make are not actually breaking issues, you know, breaking things. Um, my own personal record is that I've been fairly bad at it because um, I'm not that experienced with C++. So I don't feel com confident in understanding even how the tests really work. They seem a bit like black ma magic. Um, but the, when it they comes are, to the, the, they are, but you don't need to understand how they uh, are made to make one. You just you can just copy how they look, and you, it's very very easy to understand how they work when you look at them. And yeah. uh, you leave that hose those that work to black magic and it works. Yep. Uh, uh, when it comes to the extensions, um, the Python code, I've worked very, very hard to, to try and increase the code coverage so that people who want to work on uh, Python code will have confidence that the changes that they're making are not breaking things. Or at least if they are breaking things, we understand why they're breaking. Um, which I think has has allowed me to merge people's cha changes, especially new developers who who might not be experienced developers. I had more confidence as a reviewer in merging cha changes in. Um, so if 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 you're interested, I can probably have a look at um, like, like small bugs that you might be able to fix if you're interested. Yes, that that's one. That possibly is the most interesting thing that I would offer, which is why I've come to the meeting to find out whether whether people do sort of uh, bounce bugs around with with the notion that someone might pick it up and and offer a fix. And the, the very last thing on my list would be possibly well into the future uh, after a Fion Rouge of a marathon would be uh, but you didn't actually ask this before. And that is that one of the things that I am interested in vector drawing at all is because this year I've got no artistic skills. I'm more a mathematician. And I was very fond of a program called Freehand, 
I don't know whether you remember um, Aldous Freehand or before it was bought and sold. And I would so much like to, to make a, a user interface for, for Inkscape that matched Freehand. That, that would be interesting. You might want to uh, create a user experience issue request uh, with screenshots and things that show the kinds of fun functionality that you would you would hope to see. Um, probably because whenever you add new new workflows, you have to make sure that they don't disrupt any of the existing ones. Um, and I'm not sure what um, freehand like I don't know what it, what its thrust is in terms of what fun functionality we need to add it to Inkscape to make it do the those those same things. It's probably quite a lot uh, simpler than what Inkscape already has. But to try to give a, a flavour of this, which might or might not put you off the idea altogether, the Inkscape is probably quite close to, to Coral Draw, which I do like, but I really like Freehand. Sorry, has my internet disappeared? It's no, no, we, we, we hear you. Can you, have you lost our audio from us, though? No, I can. There was a period of silence. I just wondered whether you were waiting for me to speak. Oh, <laughs> no, it's okay. Um, yeah, so I, that's that's my best suggestion on, on how to proceed with that. If if you want to make a request, maybe it's about uh, limiting the number of uh, functions rather than increasing them, which is also a user experience issue. Um, I wonder if I can if Mark T is available to talk briefly before our, before our next break. Also, Uncle Peter had a question about uh, microports that Thomas can answer. <clears throat> yeah, go ahead, Thomas. Yeah, so there is actually uh, Inkscape 1. Point, um, version on microports, but it is also very outdated. And the name is different of the package. It's called Inkscape dash gtk3 dash devil um, and the process would be to open an issue on their uh, tracker which is called uh, track <laughs> and also request that they finally make an inkscape dash gtk package without devil uh, because i think devil means that this like the latest git um, and not the release version um, I've made requests like that in the past. Um, you can also send your own patch, um, but the, the process is quite strict. Uh, you have to run their, their test suite and stuff like that, I think, um, to guarantee that basically your patch properly works. Um, but I think contributions there are very welcome, and I would encourage anyone who has uh, the resources to, to go ahead. Um, and yeah, first step would be make a ticket on track if there is not already one. And if you have the resources and the knowledge, um, make a patch, um, which will close the ticket. Um, I think the patches are on your time. Excellent. So it, it looks like we're not going to have um, Mark T available just before the meeting. We've got two minutes before the, um, the break time. Mark T, if you wanted to talk, you're on mute, so you can just click on the microphone icon. Okay, sound check one, two. Um, we can hear you, but it's amazing. Okay, so um, I'm more of a um, Ruby level developer. You, your microphone is like. Uh, What's the term? A Dalek? Okay. Garbage is the term. Okay. It's okay. There is a signal, but it's 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 cool. Okay. So I'm using the Bose um, Quiet Comfort. Yeah. So. <clears throat> For the moment, um, it's about 4.30 Sydney time, 4.30 a.m. Wow, good good morning. So I just happened to be able to uh, to say hello. Um, 
and um, be impressed. Okay. Thank you for joining joining us so 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 early in the morning. And hoping everybody is staying safe. Yeah, Boston is is uh, relatively okay. Good, good. Um, I'll, I'll sign out now and chat some other time. Yeah, thanks for thanks for lend, uh, lending us your voice all, all the way from Sydney. It's exciting to have some, somebody that's on the other side of the world. And uh, it's okay. The, yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna use this to now. Um, put us back into the break time mode. Um, one thing I will say about break time, I tried very hard to put some music on, but uh, I haven't figured out how to make Pulse Audio share the, the monitor with the, with the microphone. So maybe next week.